Welcome to Capital Baptist Church and welcome to a brand new teaching series uh, called Reaching Out uh, to Neighbors and Nations. Reaching Out uh, to Neighbors and Nations. And I'm looking forward to sharing this message with you today as we talk about the topic, uh, Reach Out Globally, Start Locally. Again, the title of our message today is Reach Out Globally, but listen, start locally. Now, this series is part of what we call our missions focus. And so I'd like to take a, a few minutes here as we start out today and explain to you uh, what is our global missions focus. Uh, because I realize that uh, many people uh, have never experienced anything like uh, what we're going to be doing here uh, in this uh, series. And quite frankly, there are many people that have never even one time uh, met a, a missionary in their whole life. And, and so this is really a, you know, a, a, a new experience uh, for, for a bunch of people. And so I want to take a few minutes here and just explain it to you, okay? So when we say the word mission, what do I mean by mission? Well, here is how I define our global missions focus and the mission. It's this. It's making sure that everyone in the world hears the gospel of Jesus Christ correctly and planting New Testament churches among those who believe. So uh, there's two parts to this. One part is evangelism and the other part is discipleship. And so the first part of our mission is to make sure everyone in the world, at least one time in their life, hears a clear presentation of the gospel and making sure it's presented uh, in a co exact, correct uh, manner. I'm going to do that today, okay, as part of my sermon. And then when we preach the gospel, guess what happens? Praise God, people get saved. And you know what people uh, that get saved need? They need a local church, all right? God, God listen, God, uh, a, a Christian without a local church is an orphan, a spiritual orphan. Uh, every single uh, Christian needs a strong Christian church, all right? A New Testament church. And so what we have to do is we have to start churches among those who uh, believe, all right? And, and so that's what this is about. And this is based on the Word of God, and particularly the book of Acts. The book of Acts is the history book of the New Testament, and it tells what went on in the first century church. And I just want to read this to you, Acts 14, 23 through 27, and here it talks about the early church. And it says in Acts 14, 23, So when they had appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. And what I say to that verse is on mission, all right? They are on mission. This is Paul, uh, the apostle, and, uh, and his team, and they're on what we call the first missionary journey. There's actually three of those uh, in the book of Acts. And the Bible says here that they went and they preached the gospel. There were people that believed. And among those people that believed, uh, it talks about how they uh, organized uh, a church. And it says they appointed elders. And, and uh, so there's a, a position, an office uh, in the church. Uh, and there's a Bible word uh, elder. There's a Bible word bishop. There's a Bible word pastor. And it's the same office in the church. And elder means mature one, bishop means overseer, and pastor means shepherd. And so as you go from church to church, people use those different terms. Uh, in the Baptist church, uh, usually we use the term pastor, okay? So I often refer to myself as Pastor Steve Reynolds. But frankly, I could say elder, I could say bishop, and that would all be uh, biblical uh, as well. But they appointed leaders, pastors for those churches. And then verses 24 and 25, and I call this on journey. It says, after they had passed through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. Now when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Artelia. And so what do, what do missionaries do? Missionaries literally go from place to place, right? 
In other words, they, are, they go here, they go there, they evangelize, they disciple, you know, they preach the gospel, they start churches. And then notice verse 26 uh, on reporting. It says, from there they sail to Antioch. All right, That's, that means that's a city called Antioch. And in that city was a church. And this uh, church was what we call their sending church. So as you hear from missionaries... Um, so, some of our missionaries, we're their sending church. Like, like you're going you're gonna to meet Steve and Debbie Poston. Uh, they were members here at Capitol. We sent them out to be missionaries uh, to Mexico, all right? And, uh, and in other words, sending, uh, a sending church is people like in the church that are sent out to be missionaries. And then there's supporting churches, or should, I should, well, supporting churches, but also supported missionaries. Uh, and these are missionaries that they have another sending church, but we contribute to their financial need, okay? And so Antioch was their sending church. It says where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work which they had completed. They, they had been sent out. They had been commended to do this work. And here's what they did. Now, when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported all that God had done with them and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. What did they do? Well, the missionaries came back. It says they came. They came back to their church, right? And it says they gathered the church together. Listen, let's gather together. You, you know, be here uh, every single uh, Sunday uh, to, to hear these sermons and to hear these uh, missionaries. They gather, they said, church, the missionaries are here. Let's get together. And what did the missionaries do? They reported. They reported. They, they told what God had done with them and how he opened the door of faith uh, to the Gentiles. And so, listen, welcome. Welcome to our global missions focus. Now, as we come, uh, let's realize that God has called us to reach those near us and those far away. Let me say that again. God has called us to reach those near us and those far away. And that's why we've entitled our series, and on top of that, our missions focus, Reaching Out to Neighbors and Nations. Because God has called us to reach, listen, those that are near us. That would be our neighbors. But he's also called us to reach those far away, and that's the nations. So with that in mind, let's dive in here on our first uh, sermon in this series. And again, the title is Reach Out Globally, Start Locally. And so today we're going to look in Luke 24, uh, 40 through 49. Luke 24, 40 through 49. And we're going to go through that entire passage verse by verse. But right now I want to read our key verse for today, which just so happens to be the key verse for the whole series. All right. Uh, so our key verse for today, you're going to hear it every week, all right, because it's also the key verse for the series. And here Jesus says in Luke 24, uh, 47, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations. Now, as we look at this passage, the context is this. After Jesus rose from the grave, the Bible teaches us that before he ascended back up into heaven, uh, he spent 40 days on this earth. And during those 40 days, he made what we call post-resurrection appearances. He, he, would, he would show up, if you will, all right? And so Luke 24, 44 through 49, is one of those post-resurrection experiences. And what Jesus said here was this, all right? He's told them, reach out globally, start locally. So let's dive in here. Let's talk about this. How? How to reach out globally, start locally. How, 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 how can we do this? Well, this passage tells us exactly how uh, to do it. And the first thing it says is to realize that we reach out by necessity. We reach out by necessity. Necessity. Jesus started out this passage by saying uh, this. He said, then he said to them, thus it is written 
And thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and rise from the dead the third day. Now notice in that verse uh, the statement, it was necessary. It was necessary. You know, if we are going to be serious about reaching out, we have to realize that it's not an option. It is absolutely necessary that we reach out. And two ways I want to mention uh, about why it's necessary. Uh, number one, it was necessary or it is necessary for salvation. All right. It was necessary for salvation that Christ died for our sin and resurrected from the grave. You see, it says here in this verse, uh, it was necessary. It was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from uh, the dead the third day. I mean, if we are going to be saved, all right, there was only one way we're going to get saved. And that was through the fact that Jesus Christ would do what was necessary. You know, the bottom line is that right before Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for us, he actually asked the Father, is there another way? Did you know this? The Bible says in Matthew 26, 39, as Jesus is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible says he, meaning Jesus, went a little farther, fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it is possible, if it is possible, let this cup, the cup meaning the sacrifice, uh, pass from me. Nevertheless, listen, I love this, not as I will, but as you will. I mean, Jesus knew what was ahead. Jesus knew the, the, the pain, the suffering that he would have to endure. And he's saying, Father, is there another way? Uh, is it possible for me to, to pass over uh, this cup? Okay, and is there another way? And of course, the answer was no. There, there was no other way. Jesus had to do it. Uh, Jesus, I mean, there was only one way to provide salvation, and that was through the perfect sacrifice uh, of Jesus Christ. And then listen, it is necessary for salvation that you receive the gospel and declare it to others. I and mean, it was necessary for Jesus to make the sacrifice. Understand? Now it's necessary, if we're going to be saved, that we got to receive the gospel. And if others are going to be saved, uh, we have to be willing to declare the gospel. And that's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel. We, we have to declare the gospel. And Paul says, which I preach to you, which also you received, in which you stand. He says, number one, you received this because I declared it. I declared it. And in verses 3 and 4, he says, For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, number one, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now, at the beginning of our message today, I defined the statement. I said, listen, it's, we must make sure everybody, at least one time, and the key phrase is correctly, here is the gospel. I mean, that, that's what we got to be about. We got to make sure everybody, at least one time, if we can do more, that's great, but at least one time, make sure everybody hears the gospel correctly, in a correct way. And here it is. What's the correct way? We're to tell people the good news. The good news is, number one, Christ died uh, for our sins, uh, according to the scriptures. He didn't die for his sins. He died for our sins. And that number two, he was buried. And, and number three, we got to tell everyone he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Ladies and gentlemen, this is necessary. We don't have an option if we want to see people saved. I mean, if we don't care and we don't care if people go to heaven or hell and we, we, it doesn't matter to us and we'll just let people go to hell, of course it's not necessary. But if we really care and we really want people to hear the gospel and be saved and spend eternity in heaven, it's necessary. It's necessary that we reach out. 
Number two, reach out through preaching. How, how are we to reach out? Well, Jesus said in Luke 24, 47a, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. Listen, reach out through preaching. Reach out through preaching. You see, preaching is God's chosen method. Preaching is God's chosen method. In fact, 1 Corinthians 1.21 says, For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. I mean, how is God going to save people? How are people going to believe? The message has to be preached. The message has to be preached. And so many times when, when people think about the preaching of the message, they think about the preacher like an occupation, like Pastor Steve is a preacher. But that's not what it means in the Bible. The, the word, listen, the word preached is the Greek verb caruso, which means to make public declarations proclaim aloud. Let me read that again. Preached is the Greek verb caruso. And listen to what it means. It means to make public declarations proclaim aloud. Who, who are the preachers? Every Christian is a preacher. You know, I mean, not every Christian is, uh, you know, a, a pastor who uh, has that as a, as a uh, calling and an occupation like, like Pastor Steve Reynolds. But every Christian is a preacher. E every preacher has a responsibility uh, to make the public declaration of the gospel and proclaim it aloud. God uses preaching. That's his chosen method. In other words, his chosen method is one person will tell another person. Okay? In other words, we're to tell the gospel. We're to proclaim the gospel. Also, he said, preach this. Preach repentance and forgiveness of sins. Preach repentance and forgiveness of sins. You see, we've got to understand, our sin is an, an offense to a holy God. Let me say that again. Our sin, your sin, my sin, is an offense to a holy God. God is holy. God, God is perfect, all right? We are unperfect. We are unholy. And we sin. And what that requires is that we repent. And repent means a change of mind that leads to a change of direction, all right? So when you repent of your sin, you're, you're turning, you know, to God and you're turning away from your sin. You're making a U-turn, a U-turn. And so when you get saved, you repent of your sin. And, and, and listen, this is required. This is not an option. If you want forgiveness, uh, he says you got to preach uh, repentance. Jesus, in Luke 13, 3, Jesus preached repentance. Jesus said, I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Jesus said, unless you repent, you're going to go to hell, basically. You're going to perish. Uh, Jesus preached repentance. Listen, the apostles, the early church preached repentance. Acts 3.19, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out or forgiven so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. I mean, what do the apostles preach? Repent! Repent! If you want to be converted, if you want your sins to be blotted out and forgiven, repent. And then listen, preach in the name of Jesus. Preach in the name of Jesus. The Bible says uh, we have to preach in His name. His name. Why? Because there's no other name whereby people can be saved. Acts 4.12 says, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name, there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. We have to preach the one 
and only name that will save. And that name is Jesus. 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 We have to tell people Jesus is the one and only way. And it was Jesus who died for our sins. It was Jesus who was buried. It was Jesus who rose from the grave to give us eternal life. How can we reach out globally, start locally? Reach out by necessity. It's necessary. Reach out through preaching. And then listen to this. Reach out to all nations, beginning with neighbors. Reach out to all nations, beginning with neighbors. Now, this is at the heart of our sermon title today, all right? And the sermon title is Reach Out Globally, Start Locally. You see, Jesus said our key verse for today and also our key verse for the series, Luke 24, 47, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name to all nations, all right, beginning at Jerusalem. So first of all, we're to reach out, and here's the key word, simultaneously to both neighbors and nations. Now, what Jesus isn't saying is that you just, you know, reach out locally and just stop there. What Jesus actually tells us is we have to do it simultaneously. In other words, while we're reaching out, all right, uh, locally, we have to also reach out globally. Because in Acts 1.8, the last thing Jesus tells us, I mean, this is it. This is the last thing he's going to say before he goes back up into heaven. Jesus said, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Now listen to this, both. See the word both? In Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. See the, see the word both? That means simultaneously. The whole time we're reaching out locally, that's our Jerusalem. We're to be reaching out to Judea. That'd be like, to us, that'd be like the mid-Atlantic states. Uh, Samaria be, would be like the total United States. And then the uttermost part of the earth, that would be beyond uh, the United States. Uh, listen, we're to do it simultaneously. All right, that's why when you look at our Reach Out uh, Missions uh, program, we support missions right here in this community, okay? But at the same time, we support missionaries uh, in faraway places because that's the command. And then listen, reach out to your neighbors. Reach out to your neighbors. Now, let me, let me give you a definition of the word neighbors we're going to use in our teaching series, all right? Listen closely. I'm going to define neighbors this way. Neighbors are defined as anyone near you. Anyone near you. So this definition goes beyond who lives in the apartment next to you or the condo next to you or the house next to you or whatever. I know a lot of times that's, the, you know, we, we use that for the word neighbor. Okay, and I get that, all right? I'm not trying to, you know, <laughs> knock that. But by definition, biblically, okay, uh, particularly if you look at like the story of the, of the Good Samaritan, uh, Jesus talked about uh, who is the neighbor and really it was the person in need, and the person that's near you, okay? The person that's near you. So neighbor is, listen, it's anyone near you. And so as we think about this in, uh, in Matthew uh, 22, uh, 39, I want to read that to you. Matthew 22, uh, verse number 39. Remember that what Jesus said? He said there's two great commandments. And the first one is to love God with all your heart, uh, soul, and mind. And then he said the second, listen, the second is like unto it. And that's in Matthew 22, uh, 39. Matthew 22, 39. And listen to what Jesus said. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You should love your neighbor as yourself. Now, let me ask you a question, all right? If you weren't saved, and I, and I don't know for sure you are saved, but, uh, you know, uh, but let's just use me. I am saved, all right? So would I, if I wasn't saved, would I want somebody to tell me how to get saved? The answer is yes, right? To love your neighbor as yourself, I mean, 
I mean, if you know the answer for sin, you know the answer for salvation, you know the answer to how to avoid hell and, and go to heaven, I mean, you got to love your neighbor, okay? you got, you got to you got to care about those that are near you. And then as you think about this, start with your family. Start with your family. Uh, you know, I love the example in John chapter 1, verses 40 through uh, 41, all right? And the Bible says here, one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew. Andrew. And notice it says... This was Simon Peter's brother. So Andrew, the Bible tells us, meets Jesus, who is the Messiah. And he becomes a follower of Jesus. And the Bible says that Andrew had a relationship, and that relationship was his brother. And notice what it says in verse 41 of John. He first found his own brother Simon. He first found his own brother Simon. And said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And, and I love this example because we need to be like Andrew. Uh, you know, we need to, you know, first try to reach our family. You know, my number one, you know, mission field to reach out to right now. Uh, my, my, my children, my wife is saved. My children are saved. Uh, their, their spouses are saved. Uh, I mean, you know, very well, some of our older grandchildren now could be saved, okay, uh, as they're understanding the gospel and they have prayed uh, the, the salvation prayer. Uh, but the point is, I mean, I got to make sure all nine of them, okay, are saved, all right? That's my number one responsibility, okay? And, uh, and, and so what that means is you got to care about your family. You got to care about your siblings. You got to care about, you know, the people in your family, right? The people in your, in your family. And, uh, and, and so make it your goal to reach your family, right? You know, pray for them, present the gospel. And I know a lot of times this is the hardest part because, you know, familiarity breeds contempt, right? And so sometimes, you know, you're sitting here trying to tell your brother about Jesus or whatever. Well, it's just my old brother or whatever. I get that. Uh, but do your best, right? Do your best. The point I'm trying to make is don't be thinking about, you know, reaching people uh, over in, you know, England, okay? And, and forget your own family, all right? Start with your family. And then, listen, uh, look at Acts 20.20. 20, Acts 20.20. 20. It says, how I kept back nothing that was helpful. This is Paul, the apostle, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house. Paul says, listen, I, I, didn't, I didn't keep back what was helpful. And he's really talking about the gospel. The gospel helps people, right? And he mentions, I, I taught you publicly. And for me, that's like the marketplace around us, right? The places we go, the, you know, the gas station, the dry cleaners, the, the grocery store, you know, the workplace, where, where we go uh, to work. You know, we, we need to reach out to those people publicly. And then from house to house, we, we need to try to make sure the gospel is given to every single house. And one thing we're doing right now to uh, practice that is called pray and go, pray and go. And right now, uh, we're challenging uh, our church, number one, to put a, 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 a door hanger on every door, okay, to pray for every home and put a door hanger, uh, which has the gospel on it and information about how the church wants to help them, on every door in our zip code, our church zip code, 22003. And on top of that, we're challenging every one of us where we live, you know, some people live in our zip code, 22003. Uh, many do not, okay, many do not. But wherever we live, okay, to go to the closest uh, people around us, all right, house to house, house to house. And then not only reach out to your neighbors, reach out to nations, reach out to nations. Now, we're going to define nations this way. Nations are defined as anyone far away from us. So neighbors, as we share this series and our mission's focus, it's those that are near us. Nations are going to be those 
far away from us. In Matthew 28, 19a, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. So the commandment is to make disciples, to, to, to train fully committed Christians, right? Fully committed Christians. And, uh, and that's what God has, has told us uh, to do. And, and, and so, you know, as we think about neighbors, we can do that, right? But listen, if we want to obey this command to nations, what do we got to do? We got to send somebody to represent us. And who are those people? They're missionaries, okay? They're missionaries. So again, reach out globally, start locally, and really do it simultaneously. And then as we close, a fourth thing, reach out as a witness, a witness. Jesus said in Luke 24, 48, and you are witnesses of these things. And you're witnesses of these things. And uh, so what does that mean to be a witness? It means to represent, represent Jesus wherever you go. So here's the deal. You don't get, we don't get a choice about whether we're a witness, right? The question is, are we a good witness or a bad witness, okay? <laughs> In other words, I'm going where I go, right? So I'm a witness to everybody, you know, by my very life, okay? So the question isn't whether you'll be a witness. You're going to be a witness, all right? The question is, are you going to be a bad witness or a good witness? And we need to be a good witness. And what that means is we live the gospel. We live it. We, 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 none of us are perfect, but we do our best to live uh, a good life, so to speak, uh, you know, before other people. Uh, but on top of that, uh, at some point, it has to come off our lips, right? It's not enough just with your life, you know, because we've got to preach, right? We've got to preach, and that means you've got to proclaim it, right? You've got to proclaim it. And then reach out in the Holy Spirit. You know, when you talk about reaching out to uh, neighbors and nations, it's a supernatural work. It's a supernatural work. And, uh, and we can't do it alone. We can't do it in the flesh. Uh, Jesus concluded in Luke 24, 49 and said this, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And what Jesus is saying is, my time on this earth is coming to a close. But when I go up, the Holy Spirit is coming down. And I, this is a promise, okay? This is a promise from the Father. You will not be left alone. The Holy Spirit will come to reside in you. And the Holy Spirit will come to empower you to reach out, to reach out. So rely on the Holy Spirit. Depend on Him to give you the words to speak, to give you the boldness you need to speak it, and to give you uh, what it takes to live as a good witness for Him. Ladies and gentlemen, God has called us to reach out, to reach out to neighbors, to reach out to nations. And to do that, we got to reach out by necessity. Hey, we don't have an option. We got to do it. All right. Reach out through preaching. We have to proclaim the message of the gospel. Reach out to all nations, beginning with neighbors. OK, do it simultaneously and then reach out as a witness, a witness, a good witness for Jesus. And then lastly, reach out in the Holy Spirit. Reach out. Reach out to your neighbors and reach out to nations.